Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to using the ESP32's real-time operating system or RTOS in Arduino. And before I get started, I just want to talk about a collaboration Forstronics has on a new company called Anabit. Anabit is about making data converter technology, which is analog to digital conversion or ADC or digital to analog conversion, DAX accessible to all. And we do that through open source reference designs with in-depth tutorials. For example, Anabit has a, an open source precision multimeter. It has an open source precision data logger design, things like that. So check it out at anabit.co. All right, let's get started. Okay, what is an RTOS or real-time operating system? So I'm sure everybody is familiar with our operating systems like Windows or Linux. The main job of these operating systems is to handle different processes or programs and put them on the processor, schedule them, prioritize, control how long they run. Well, an RTOS is a stripped down operating system that's really allows the user to control timing and priority of processes or tasks that are gonna run on your computer. Now, an RTOS can be made for different platforms. I'm gonna talk about it in conjunction with microcontrollers, right? Because that's what the ESP32 is. So what's nice about an RTOS is, let's say that you need to read various sensors. Maybe some of them are analog sensors. Maybe some of them are I squared C or SPI. Then you need to send data over Bluetooth. And then maybe you're sending out control signals, maybe PWM signals, things like that. So you have all these different tasks you need to do with different timing requirements. So how would you do that in Arduino? Well, you'd have to set up different timers or maybe interrupts to handle the timing of all the different things happening. Well, an RTOS makes that very easy. You can just define how often you want a task, which can be a function or could be multiple functions to run. It handles the timing. You set a priority, it handles the priority. So in this tutorial, we're gonna talk about using the RTOS and creating a task for the ESP32. The ESP32 leverages an open source RTOS platform called Free RTOS, and really anybody can leverage this open source you know, RTOS library. In fact, I've used it before in Microchips MP Lab X for a SAMD51 project. So that's not in the Arduino environment, but I just, you use it like a library, you set everything up, and then you basically get the benefits of Free RTOS. Now, ESP32 though is using Free RTOS, but it's configured under the hood so you don't need to do anything to configure it. But since it is done under the hood, you might not be aware, but you can access it right in the Arduino IDE and take advantage of the ability to set up tasks where the RTOS will handle the timing and the priority and things like that. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. You have to define a priority for each task. That way, if the RTOS is running a lot of tasks and it has to make a decision based on timing, which one to run, it, does, it chooses the one with the higher priority. Also, it has a tick rate or a clock tick of one millisecond. So that's the resolution you get for timing. If I wanna run a task every second, I would define that as a thousand milliseconds, the timing to run it. Or I can run a task as quick as one millisecond. It's really hard though to run tasks faster than one millisecond. In that case, you would wanna do the operations quickly inside the task if you needed faster than one millisecond timing. So that's one limitation of RTOS. Another nice thing about it is you can choose what core, because ESP32, or at least most ESP32s, have more than one core, so you can define which core you want that task to run on. The ESP32, or the Arduino IDE, the setup function, as well as the loop, is actually an RTOS task. It's a free RTOS task, and we'll see how we're going to control the operation of it, or the timing of the operation, right in the sketch. Okay, next we're going to look at a demo showing our task, our RTOS task that we're going to create in action, so you can kind of see what we're going to demo in the video. Then we'll jump into the code to see how you implement it. And of course, the code you can access on Forstronics Patreon page. Okay, here we're looking at the demo and we're looking at the serial terminal for the Arduino sketch that we'll look at in a second. But the idea is in the main loop, I'm printing out some information. I'm printing out what core we're running on. I'm printing out the millis counter. I'm printing out the delay for the loop. And then I'm showing you the task delay, which is five milliseconds. So by default, we're running a task every five milliseconds. Now we could run it at one millisecond, we could run it at 100 milliseconds, 
By default, we're running it at five milliseconds, and this sketch allows you to enter a new task delay or task timing into the serial monitor, and it'll change in real time. Now, what are we doing in our task? Well, in our task, we're actually controlling an Anabit DAC design that can output a voltage from 10 volts to negative 10 volts. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this task to build a stair step sine wave. Okay, so we're going to look at an oscilloscope with the DAC. And so here is the Anabit DAC board, and we have spy communication uh, through an ESP32 that's, of course, running the RTOS and our Arduino sketch and then we're measuring the output. And the sine wave is made up of eight different points. And right now by default, the task is running a point every five milliseconds. So notice the period of our sine wave is 40 milliseconds, which of course is five milliseconds times eight. So there's our stair step sine wave. We're looking at on an oscilloscope. And now let's go in and change the timing of the task. So every two seconds, we're printing out new information. I'm entering one millisecond, so T1, so timing one millisecond. So we're gonna speed up our task as fast as it can go. So I press enter and we can see the period of the sine wave picks up, and now we're seeing eight milliseconds, right? Eight points to the sine wave, each task and each point is being run at a millisecond, so we see eight milliseconds for a full period or 125 hertz. So once again, the flexibility where we can change the timing of the task. And I'm gonna do it one more time just for the heck of it, I'm gonna do eight milliseconds. So we're gonna see our period increase and eight times eight, of course, is 64 milliseconds. So I think you get the point here. All right, so that's seeing a task in action, right? So it's gonna handle this precise timing for us so we don't have to handle it in code or we have an easy way to set it up in code. Speaking of the code, let's look at the code. Okay, here is this sketch that you were just looking at in the demo. First thing to point out is notice I have some library calls to free RTOS. I have spy communication because that's what we're using to communicate with the Anabit DAC board. Here is some other calls. So these calls are actually for controlling pin settings. So I wanted to be able to change the chip select pin quickly because that's what's controlling the output of the DAC. Digital writes, the Arduino built-in digital writes are kind of slow. So I'm using some under the hood functions to change the output uh, states or pin states of the ESP32. Uh, the, the Anabit Reflex DAC is a 14-bit DAC. That's what I'm setting here. The reference voltage is 10 volts. That's how it achieves a 10 volt to negative 10 volt or 20 volt output range. Then I have some timing variables, the loop delay. So this is the delay for the Arduino loop to execute. And then our task delay in milliseconds is five, right? That's the default. This variable is from the RTOS library itself. That's why you're seeing a custom variable task handle. And the task handle, which we initialized to null, but we'll later change that, is a handle to use it to get information or change settings on the task. We're not really gonna use it in this example, but that's that's what you would use it for. This string variable is just for handling command line stuff for changing the timing setting of the task. Here you can see I'm setting up variables for the spy communication. This table size is for the sine wave. Remember it has eight points. So that's how many points are defining the sine wave. You could change that if you wanna do different points. I then set up the spy for 60 megahertz and spy mode zero, most significant bit first. This is an array to hold the sine wave values. That's why we see our variable table size there. Then we have table counter, which just tracks where we are in executing through the array. Now next we have our task function. So this is the function that was executing by default every five milliseconds, but then we change it to one, we change it to eight. So this is the, the layout of it. So we have a infinite for loop definition, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't execute infinitely because the RTOS is controlling it. Here's those chip select writes that I'm using. This is faster than Arduino's digital writes. That's why I'm using it. So what we do is we do CS pin low, we send the next value from our sine wave, and then we go high to tell the DAC to output it. Then we update our counter. We check if we need to reset it. But here is another free RTOS call. This is the task delay. So this is what's defining how often this task is called. 
So by default, it's five milliseconds. In the video, we changed it. And there's our task delay variable. Now, one thing I want to be clear on is a lot of times when we hear delay, if you're used to programming in Arduino, a delay just means the CPU freezes and does nothing. But in RTOS, a delay just means timing. And during that delay, the RTOS is executing other tasks. Then we get to our setup function. This is where we have our serial communication. We delay to give you time to open up the serial monitor. We do set the pin direction using uh, Arduino calls for the chip select pin. We then build our sine wave. We then start our spy communication and we begin transaction. And then we print stuff out to the serial monitor, basically stating what our delay times are and things like that. We also print out a help menu now we get to the important part where we set up the task. So we define the task in a function and you can actually put other function calls inside that task function if you want. But here we, we're telling this, we're setting up the, the task to execute and we're setting up its settings. This is the function right here, my task that we showed earlier. And you can see that you can see it right here. And then we're gonna give it a name, a string name, my task. Then we're going to give it a stack size. So this is how much memory we're going to allocate for the task. And what's nice about RTOS is it gives you that control. We're going to do 248 words, not bytes. And I, to be honest, I picked that arbitrarily. Now, with free RTOS, you can actually get information when you're doing debugging on how much memory your task is using. So you can kind of tune this for your needs. I'm not gonna pass any parameters. We're not gonna cover that in this video. We're gonna give it a priority of one. Now you control the priorities of the tasks, but you wanna be careful if you have a lot of tasks and you don't wanna just give them all the same priority because what'll happen is there could be conflicts and this priority tells the RTOS which one to prioritize if there's a conflict. And one thing you'll to be aware of is, and this has happened to me in the past, is if you're running a lot of tasks, you could actually use up all your CPU's bandwidth and you'll notice tasks aren't executing how you think they will. And that's because that task is being what's called starved. If you, you get in a situation where it seems like tasks aren't executing, it might be because you have too many and you're using up too much processor bandwidth. Here's that handle that just gets the information on this task in case we want to change settings or get information, such as how much memory was used on it. And then we're assigning a core. The main Arduino loop automatically uses core number one. We don't set that up. So we're gonna have this one run on core zero, right? So you do get control over what core they run on. Then we do a, a check just to make sure the task was set up correctly. Then we get in the main loop. Now, once we make that call to set up our task, it's running and we don't have to do anything else. So that DAC output that we were seeing just gets updated and updated and we don't have to worry about it anymore. We're not, we don't have to do anything in the main loop to turn it on or off. Of course, we could turn it on or off if we wanted to, but we're done at this point for running that timing and that task. Now we're just gonna check to see if there's any information being input over the serial monitor to change the task timing. We're gonna print out these variables, including the core that we're running on, the millis counter, the loop delay, and the task delay, which we can change. And then we're seeing our task delay. So what we're doing is inside the main loop, we're saying, hey, we wanna slow down this task. We want it to run every, whatever the delay is. In, in my example, it's two seconds. And remember, just like the other delay, this doesn't mean that the CPU is blocking doing nothing. It just tells it how often we want that loop to execute. The other functions I'm not gonna really cover, most of them are generated by AI, but this just builds the, the sine wave. This prints out our help menu for how to enter in the delays. This parses the delay, and then this handles the serial input and calls you know, the parse delay function. Okay, that's it for using the ESP32's RTOS in Arduino. If you have any questions, please use the comments section below. And if you have anything to add, please use the comments section. You can access the example code on Patreon and please check out anabit.co. Thank you for watching.